Lord Jesus, uphold me, that I might uplift thee. Amen. A meditation this morning, based upon the scripture lesson you heard earlier, if you turn to page 4, on the top of page 5, the account of Mary visiting Elizabeth from Luke chapter 1. In the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus the Christ, their sisters and brothers and our Savior. One of the exciting things of Christmas gifting is the surprise involved. Usually, we don't tell the recipient of the gift what we purchased. And so we then take that gift, put it in a box, some packaging, wrap it with brightly colored paper, and at Christmas Eve night or Christmas Day morning, whatever your custom is, you give the gift, the person takes it, maybe shakes it, wonders what's inside, and finally, at the moment of revelation, when you open up what's behind the wrapping and the package, you hope for the response, oh, this is great. How thoughtful. Thanks. I wanted this. Oh, how generous of you. But you know what? Being human, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And sometimes you get a gift and you kind of look at it and go, seriously? If I were to give a gift of cufflinks to a gentleman who doesn't own a shirt with French cuffs, what's the message? He might think, seriously? You want me to buy, buy another shirt? What a waste of money. I'm not going to use this. Or if I would give a brand new fishing lure to my wife, she would say more than seriously. <laughs> she doesn't fish, she never will, she doesn't eat fish. And she might think, what, are you re-gifting something? <laughs> but this whole process of giving gifts, we try to do our best, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Our Heavenly Father, of course, is the perfect gift, and every good and perfect gift comes from above. And he gives to you, each one of you, individually, exactly what he knows in his good omniscience, his perfect knowledge, what you need. And it all centers in the gift of the Son, Jesus. You know that. You've heard that. And the Bible says all God's promises are yes to us in Christ. And God has given this gift. But what I want to emphasize this morning is that God never meant it to be a surprise to people. From the very beginning of time, a loving Heavenly Father has been trying to prepare people to eagerly wait for this gift, to anticipate this gift of His Son, to prepare for this gift, and to pray for this gift with open hearts. Now it's my understanding, the last three Sundays here at Beautiful Savior, you watched one of the ways God prepared people. He sent announcements. He sent an angel Gabriel to Zechariah and talked about the birth of John the baptizer. He sent Gabriel to Mary to say, you're going to give birth to Jesus. He'll be called the Most High, the Son of God Most High. And she said, but how? And the angel Gabriel said, nothing is impossible with God. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And Gabriel even gave a reference. Go check out Elizabeth your relative. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. But God was preparing them for this, the most wondrous event of all. And today's devotion, taking a look at Mary's visit to Elizabeth, shows us that God's amazing announcements changed their lives. And I submit to you not only for Mary and for Elizabeth, God's amazing news creates amazing lives. God's amazing news creates amazing lives in you and in me. Now the reading begins in verse 39 and it says, Mary got up and hurried to the hill country. She went from Nazareth down to a town in Judah, probably Hebron, 
because that was the city of the priests in that particular tribe. We're not sure exactly, but roughly speaking, 80 to 90 miles away. I don't live in North Carolina, but I have Google Maps, and 85 miles north of here is Wake Forest. So how long would it take you to walk from Wake Forest down to Fayetteville? And here is a young maiden, three months pregnant, and she's traveling. I might be a little bit off. That's a guess with how long she's pregnant. Elizabeth is six months pregnant. Maybe she's just weeks. But anyway, she travels. Why? To check out Elizabeth? Maybe. The angel certainly pointed her to Elizabeth. But I think Mary thought, Elizabeth won't laugh at me. If it's true what the angel said, she won't laugh when I talk about an angel coming to me because an angel came to her husband. And she won't laugh when I say, I'm supposed to have a baby, and yet I'm a virgin. She won't laugh at the promise that God does miracles. And what happened? You heard about it. Mary says, hello, and Elizabeth's filled with the Holy Spirit. And suddenly the baby within, John, he's leaping for joy, the Bible says, at the arrival of the unborn Savior, the Son of God, born of the Virgin. And before Mary can even say a word, what does Elizabeth say? She knows all about it, doesn't she? Somehow she knows. Mary didn't even have the thrill of telling. But she had the thrill of saying, wow, the Holy Spirit let her know. Because Elizabeth said, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? In fact, just now, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. This is incredible. God's amazing news creates amazing lives of two believers saying, Wow, Lord. And Mary spent the next several months. In fact, the final trimester of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Mary was there. I think out of love for her relative. Can you imagine in being an elderly woman and being pregnant? Can you imagine how difficult? And yet Mary was there. And what did they talk about? Probably things that first-time mothers who were expecting a baby talk about. But more than that, Elizabeth was a wife of a priest. She knew the temple rituals and knew the Old Testament. Mary, and Joseph for that matter, were descendants of David. They are people of the promises. Don't you think that they took some time to review Sunday school lessons from the Old Testament? About the babies within them? About how John, who would later on preach, one who comes after me is greater than I, I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. Don't you think they looked at that Old Testament again about these two children? Don't you think they looked at the messianic promises of the coming? Oh, he will be humble. We esteemed him not, and yet he will reveal the glory of the Lord. He's going to be a king who will rule over a forever kingdom, and yet the prophet said he's going to be a suffering servant, and on him the Lord would lay the iniquity of us all. He started looking at these promises anew because God wanted to prepare them. They came to a conclusion. God's amazing news creates amazing lives. Because what did they remember? Amazing lives of God at work in the Old Testament. Maybe they went back a couple hundred years in the Old Testament history, and they remembered a woman who went to the tabernacle and she prayed with a heart heavy because she was barren and she was sterile. And she prayed and she underscored it with an oath. And God heard and answered and Samuel was born of Hannah. And maybe they went back even farther. They went back and read about a man by the name of Manoah. And his wife, the Bible doesn't tell us her name, but the Bible tells us her broken heart. She was sterile and barren. But the angel of the Lord came to her and said, you're going to have a baby, a boy. And when she told her husband, he said, really? Where was this? He went out and checked. The angel of the Lord came to him. And guess what? Samson was born. And they went back farther. And they heard and read and talked about a time 
or a patriarch, loved his wife dearly and waited because Rebecca was barren. And he prayed, Isaac prayed, and it was 20 years, and after two decades, God created life. And maybe they went back even farther to the first patriarch, to a man whom God changed the name from Abraham to Abraham, the father of many nations. And he's going, I don't have a child. And God made a promise, all nations will be blessed through you. And he's going, I don't have a child. And his wife Sarah, barren and sterile. But after 25 years, God did the impossible. Do you see what's happening? Do you see how God is preparing for us to celebrate this great and glorious miracle of the virgin birth, God becoming man? God's been setting the stage at the time of the patriarchs, miracle births with Abraham and Sarah, a miracle birth with Isaac and Rebekah. At the time of the judges, a miracle birth. At the time of the beginning of the prophets, a miracle birth. At the time of the forerunner, a miracle birth. God's in the miracle business. In your life as well. Because God's amazing announcements creates amazing lives. And God comes to work a miracle in your heart as great as these miracles we're talking about. The miracle of life where once there was deadness. Because there's deadness here. Jesus once said, out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Elsewhere, Scripture says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Oh, I can fake you all by what I say or what I do, and you might think everything is fine, but if you can hear what's up here or see what's in here, you'll be shocked. And I'll be shamed. Because who am I but a sinner born dead in sin? And so are you. And every one of us. With the burden of guilt. With lives that are broken in some way or another. Every family struggles with something. Every individual broken with something. And we have these pet sins we can't get away from. They ensnare us and entrap us. And with the Apostle Paul, we say, what am I going to do? The good I would, I do not. The evil that I would not, that I do. What a wretched person I am. Who's going to rescue me? The Christ of God, the virgin born, sent by God into the world to be perfect in my place and your place, to match God's standard of holiness. And he comes to you through baptism, and he wraps you up in that holiness. For all of you who are baptized in Christ are clothed with Jesus. And he looks at you and says, perfect. And the curse upon me for my sin and my evil, God sent his son to stand in the crosshair of his fury. And in his body on the tree, Jesus took that curse, suffered hell, that you might see the Father smile, not his fury, because the blood of Jesus' the son purifies us from every sin. And that's what Mary starts to sing about immediately. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. She had those same difficulties in life as we all do. She is a sinner, and yet she rejoiced. My Savior is here. And what does he do? Mary sings about all sorts of things. He talks about, she talks about, that he will extend his arm, mighty deeds with his arm. And what did he do? Reached out and touched the leper and healed, fed thousands, quieted nature, raised the dead, and reached out his arm to have it nailed on a tree for you and me. She knew, as we know, who this child is. And this amazing news, God's amazing news, creates amazing lives, and I'm looking at it. I'm looking at God's amazing work. You gather together around the Word of God to hear this amazing announcement. And the Spirit takes it and creates a new life in you. Not perfect, because we're not in heaven yet. But a life confident of full forgiveness, full and free and forever. A life of patience, even during times of difficulty. 
a life of hope even through tears of sorrow, a life in endurance, endurance even though suffering. But you keep going to that manger, kneeling at that Christ child because you know why he's come. And God's amazing news creates amazing lives that go out into the world and you are just who you are in Jesus. And they see not a perfect person, but a forgiven person. They see one who strives to be faithful, whether as an employer, employee, whether as a parent or spouse. One who seeks to give glory to God in Christ. Christmas gifts, exciting, sometimes a surprise. But God's gift to you in Christ is never meant to be a surprise. He's been talking about it since the garden when he said, the seed of the woman will crush your head. The seed of the woman, a biological impossibility, but God makes everything happen. And may he make you, you who he declares to be my witnesses, may he make you amazing lives to the glory of Jesus, his son, our Savior. Amen. Please stand and turn to page six. We read responsibly a confession of faith. In a world that can only guess it was created somehow and by something, what do you believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. In a world that often teaches Jesus was just a great human teacher, a wise prophet, or just another way to God, what do you believe? We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. In a world that still believes salvation is through the good and helpful things we do, what do you believe? For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. In a world that loosely holds on to every word that sounds spiritual or religious, what do you believe? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who have spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as the thank offerings are done.
In our prayers for today, we will keep in mind Mr. Villamil, who is having back problems. We will also pray for the family of Mr. Teisty. Mr. Teisty was taken home to heaven earlier this week. And we will also pray for Mr. Cody, a prayer of thanksgiving for his eye surgery. We join in prayer. What a great marvel we celebrate today, that you, our God, became fully human for our salvation. Even though you are the all-powerful Lord of all, you permitted yourself to be wrapped in strips of cloth and laid in a manger. Help us always believe that you, Lord Jesus, were born as our substitute to be our Savior. In the midst of our joy, we grieve for the many people in our world who do not know that you have come to bring them forgiveness and healing. As the shepherds spread abroad the good news of the birth of the Savior, born for all the world, may we also make use of the unique opportunities this holiday presents to tell others of what we have seen and heard concerning your great love. We grieve, along with Arlene Teisty and her family, at the time of the death of Harold this past week. Bring them the joy that comes from looking forward to our reunion with him and all your people in heaven. Comfort them with the certainty of your presence and love through their times of sadness. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Cody and Mark through surgery this past week. Continue to renew their health. Be with Jamie and Julie, who are facing new or reoccurring health complications. Grant wisdom to their physicians and healing according to your will. And hear us, Lord, as we join in the prayer you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord give you favor and peace. Amen. We will sing the following hymn, and the children will sing verse 1.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you. We're glad you could be here, whether you've come from further away um, and colder places or whether you've come from uh, close by. Um, thank you is probably a good theme to have this morning. First, adding to all the thanks we have to our Savior um, as we celebrate Christmas. Um, thanks to those who shared that news with us today. So, thank you, first of all, to all of you children who sang so beautifully in order to praise Jesus, our Savior. Thank you for doing that for us today and the time you spent learning and getting ready to do that. Um, thank you to Simeon for leading us in the worship, and thank you to Pastor Darling for sharing a word of encouragement uh, for us based on our gospel lesson today. Um, a connection then between all of those thank yous and then um, our Bible hour. We'll take some time for refreshments, probably 20 minutes. Anybody who is able to stay in the Bible hour time, we'll just all be together. Um, we'll have a little information. Pastor Zarling is also president of our, um, our worker training college for both pastors and teachers, Martin Luther College. He's brought along some items to share with you. Um, I think those can, people can just have those. There's a table in back. Um, and, and also to answer any questions you have informally uh, about um, that, that work to train uh, leaders in our schools, in our churches, and then in the Bible Hour, we'll, we'll hear a little more and you'll have a chance to ask questions if you would like to. So um, if you're able to stay around, please uh, stay around for that. Oh yeah, I was going to make the connection with um, Christmas to that. We think about the, the shepherds, right? The, the shepherds not only came to see the news, but then they immediately started spreading the news. And, and there's the tie with what we do for as a church body at Martin Luther College. Um, we're, we're getting people ready to share that, that news that we know. So... Um, it's a good fit for today to be able to spend time with that. So if you're able, stay around. Um, refreshments in the back? Anything else I need to announce? Yes, Jill. Um, sort of opposite of the theme, but if you were interested in watching Harold's funeral, you can go to King of Grace Golden Valley, and it's under the sermons tab. Okay. King of Grace Golden Valley. It's in the Twin Cities, Minnesota. Um, okay. And we can try to send that out too um, uh, to update people. I know we had the, the obituary passed on and the news for the service. So. And it's not really that different, right? Um, we give thanks that because our Savior came, He's enjoying heaven, and we just experience the sadness now of, of missing Him. Okay. I think that's... Yes? Oh yeah, um, we did mention this the other week. If you are able to and would like to bring cookies along with you for the um, evening service tomorrow night, um, then that would be great. We'd love to have refreshments afterwards and some snacks for people at the Christmas Eve service. And if there's any left over, Christmas morning is never bad for Christmas cookies either. So um, that, that reminds me, there are still invitations left for the Christmas services. We have the evening service tomorrow, a candlelight service, if you are able to make it um, with the... Uh, the, the evening service, and so that's at 6.30, and then the Christmas Day service is at our usual morning time on Tuesday, 10 a.m. If you would like to have a reminder of that, or would like to invite anyone else, there are still invitations on the way out, um, please do join us, come back, and, and uh, rejoice with us, and invite others as well. God bless you this day.